Hi everyone, uh, I'm Jinchen from University of Michigan. Today, I'm going to introduce our system, Tiresias. It's an efficient GPU cluster manager for distributed deep learning training jobs. This is a joint work with folks from Microsoft, ByteDance, Unist, and Alibaba Group. Deep learning-based technology has been widely applied in many domains, such as object detection and speech recognition. With the increase of those applications, more and more deep learning models should be trained. In Microsoft, the number of their deep learning models has been increased by more than 10 times during the past year. Normally, training jobs are computer intensive and require special hardware, which is GPU, to execute. And moreover, in distributed training, people can leverage multiple GPUs to train the same job for better training performance. With the increased amount of GPU resource for distributed lear for, uh, deep learning, many companies have built their own GPU clusters for internal use. For example, in Microsoft, the scale of their GPU cluster has increased by five times. And in this work, the general question we try to answer is how to design a GPU cluster manager which can efficiently manage the GPU resource for deep learning training jobs. Uh, let's first see how a GPU cluster manager looks like. Assuming we have a GPU cluster and there are multiple GPUs available from a single machine. Users are submitting their training jobs into the cluster in an online fashion. And the resource requirement of the training jobs, especially the GPU requirement of the jobs, are specified by their users when they're submitting. The job scheduler in Cluster Manager should decide the execution order of those jobs in the job queue. And once a job is scheduled, the replacement skin in the Cluster Manager will allocate the required amount of resource for that job from the cluster and place that job onto the cluster for execution. A cluster manager should be designed with the purpose of minimize the overall job completion time, and also it should be able to achieve high resource, especially GPU utilization across the entire cluster. However, deep learning training jobs have several unique challenges, and they make it difficult for the cluster manager to achieve those targets. The first challenge is the unpredictable training time of deep learning jobs. As we all know, the exact execution time of deep learning jobs are often unaware before their completion. However, the information of job execution time is very important and useful when the job scheduler is trying to minimize job completion time. For those well-defined deep learning models, um, the training loss of them are often smooth curves and easy to learn. So based on this feature, people can predict the execution time of the training jobs uh, based on the smooth loss curve and apply this information into job scheduler. However, this method is not valid in many cases. Deep learning models are often built in a trial and error manner, so which means many jobs are just trials. The models they are working on may have errors or bad configurations which make their training loss uh, being non-smooth, just like this example. And because of the same reason, many jobs will be terminated by their users at early stage without completion. Only a small portion of the jobs can run to complete. And because of this, it's hard to predict the training time of deep learning jobs in many cases. The second challenge is the over-aggressive job consolidation during the placement. In distributed training, there are multiple job components, and they need to exchange their intermediate results during the training. If those components are placed on different machines, then the data has to be transferred over the network, which will uh, slow down the training speed of the job. So in order to protect the training performance, people will consolidate job components onto either a single machine or minimal number of machines. And in this example, this four GPU job 
cannot be placed until there's a machine with four free GPUs available. Although this consolidated placement is proposed for good training performance, it can lead to the fragmented GPUs underutilized on each machine inside the cluster, and also job may suffer longer queuing delay with this placement scheme. So to recap, uh, there are two major challenges in deep learning jobs. In job scheduling, the training time of deep learning jobs are often unpredictable. And in job placement, uh, the job components in distributed training jobs are always consolidated. The problem of resource management for deep learning cluster is receiving more and more attention, and there has been several solutions proposed. Optimus is a dynamic resource scheduler for deep learning jobs. However, it relies on the smooth loss curve for the jobs uh, to make the scheduling decision. And in job placement, it always enforces the job consolidation. Young Capacity Scheduler is originally a resource manager for big data applications, and currently is being used in a production cluster for deep learning jobs. Although, a uh, young capacity scheduler does not rely on the information of job execution time. Its FIFO based scheduler performs poorly in optimizing job's completion time. Gandiva is the most recent scheduling framework for deep learning cluster. And the jobs in Gandiva are scheduled in time sharing manner. However, time sharing based scheduling algorithms are designed for fairness instead of optimizing job completion time. And in job placement, Gandiva will have multiple trials on a single job and pick the one with the best training performance. So for those three solutions, none of them can handle those two challenges very well. So here we propose our system, Tiresias. In Tiresias, there is an age-based scheduler. It can minimize job completion time without complete knowledge of the deep learning training jobs. Also, uh, in Tiresias, it can make the placement decision based on the result from its model profiler without additional information from the users. Next, let's see how our system can schedule deep learning jobs without complete job information. To design a scheduler for deep learning jobs, we have to get a good understanding of those training jobs. So here, we gather the job information from a 10-week job trace in a production cluster. And we found huge variations in both the temporal and the spatial aspect of the training jobs. And this figure shows the distribution in terms of job execution time and GPU requirement of deep learning jobs from the job trace. Each circle in this figure means a group of jobs who have the same execution time and GPU requirement. And the area of the circle uh, represents the number of jobs in this group. In the temporal aspect for those deep learning jobs, they can be executed for just several minutes or even weeks. And the same variation happens in job's special aspect, which is their GPU requirement. Even for those jobs who have the same GPU requirement, there's still huge variation in their execution time. And because of this, uh, because of this uh, the scheduler we are going to design should consider both the temporal and special aspect of the deep learning training jobs. In the special aspect, the GPU, the, the GPU requirement of the job is always given by its user. However, in the temporal aspect, we have no idea about how long this job is going to run. But once this job gets executed, our cluster manager can easily get the information of jobs executed time. And this information is often called jobs age. There has been several classic age-based scheduler which were proposed to minimize job composition time. The first one is called least attained service, or we can just call it less. In this algorithm, it prefers jobs with shorter executed time. And for those jobs who have longer executed time, 
their priorities will be uh, lower. The idea of less has been successfully applied uh, for flow control in data center networks. The second algorithm is called Gittin's index policy. The same as less, job's priority is determined by its age. However, in this algorithm, it needs to know the distribution of job's execution time. And with this distribution information, the algorithm will assign the Gittin's index of each job based on its current age. The Gittin's index of a job represents the probability of this job to complete in the near future. So in order to minimize the overall job completion time for those jobs who have larger Gittin's index, they should have lower, a higher priority to run. And based on those two algorithms, we propose our two-dimensional age-based scheduler, or we can call it two deaths. In this scheduler, job's age is calculated by the two-dimensional attainment service, and in this problem is job's total executed GPU time. Our scheduler can work with different available job information. When there are no prior information provided, we will use the two-dimensional less algorithm. And in this algorithm, those jobs who have received less service will have higher priority to run. If the cluster can provide the distribution of jobs total GPU time from previous experience, then we will choose the two-dimensional Gittin's index to schedule jobs. And next, I will use a very simple example to introduce more details of the two-dimensional Gittin's index algorithm. Assuming we have three deep learning jobs in our job queue, and from the view of our scheduler, it has no knowledge about the exact execution time of each job. However, the distribution of job total GPU time is provided by the cluster. The input to our scheduler is jobs attained service. And this figure shows with the increase of jobs attained service, how its Gittin's index value will change under this distribution. At the beginning, when jobs attained service is getting closer to four units of GPU time, which is the data point in the distribution, the Gittin's index of this job will also increase. However, after receiving four units of GPU time without uh, completion, uh, there will be a huge degradation in jobs Gittin's index and also its priority. And this pattern will repeat when jobs get attained service is getting closer to eight units of GPU time. Before scheduling, no job has received any GPU time, so they have the same Gittin's index and share the same priority. And in this case, we will schedule jobs based on their orders in the job queue. Assuming we have two GPUs available, at time zero, job one will get resource to run, and during its running, its Gittin's index is always the largest, so it can run to completion. At the time two, job two gets the resource. After receiving four units of GPU time, its Gittin's index is uh, smaller than job three's. So we will have a job switch at time six from job two to job three. And the same situation happens after job three received four units of GPU time. In the end, the average job completion time in this case is 10 units of time. If we apply the two-dimensional less algorithm without uh, additional job information provided, then the average GCT will be 11.7. So with more information provided, our two-dimensional Gittin's index algorithm will perform better in minimized job completion time. During the scheduling, we can see multiple job switches are triggered by our scheduler. However, the time overhead of switching deep learning jobs over GPUs uh, are non-negligible. So to reduce the uh, number of job switches, we discretalize the priorities of the jobs in our scheduler by applying the idea of multi-level feedback queue. For more details about this part, please read our paper. So 
To handle the challenge of unpredictable training time, we propose the discretized two-dimensional age-based scheduler. It can work with different available job information by either applying a less-based algorithm or Gittin's index-based algorithm. Next, I will briefly introduce how our system can place deep learning jobs without hurting their training performance. To answer that question, let's look at the tensor size in deep learning models. As we all know, a deep learning model consists of many tensors, and different tensors have different size. This figure shows the tensor size in 10 popular deep learning models. And in the x-axis, we have the name of those 10 models. Each bar in this figure represents the total size of the model. And the color blocks in the bar map to the tensors in the model. Large block means large tensor. For all the VGG models and the LXN model, they are highly skilled in their tensor size distribution. And more importantly, the largest tensor of them occupies the majority space of the model. However, for the rest six models, they are more evenly distributed in their tensor size distribution. In distributed training, the amount of data transferred among job components are determined by the tensor size in the model. So if the job is not consolidated, then those large tensors can cause the network imbalance and also make the contention even worse. Both of them will slow down the training performance. And because of this reason, the consolidated placement is only needed when the model is highly skilled in its tensor size. For those models who are evenly distributed in their tensor size, their performance are not sensitive to the job consolidation. Based on this observation, we have a simple solution. In the placement scheme, we have a model profiler. It can capture the tensor size in the model. And if we detect the model is highly skilled in its tensor size, we will consolidate the job. Otherwise, the job will uh, be allocated with the available resource, which may come from different machines in the cluster. We have built a prototype system of Tiresias. There is a central master for the entire cluster. It makes the scheduling and job placement decision. Also, in each machine in the cluster, we had a network level model profiler. It can capture the necessary model information for our placement scheme. We have evaluated our system in both testbed experiments and large-scale trace-driven simulations. Our testbed has 15 machines and four GPUs each. All the machines are connected by a 100 gigabits per second RDMA network. This figure shows the job composition time distribution in this experiment with different solutions. Other than young capacity scheduler, we also implemented the shortest remaining time first based solution and provided it with the uh, job execution time information from previous runs. Compared to young capacity scheduler, our system can decrease the job queuing delay uh, greatly and the average job completion time is improved by 5.5 times. More importantly, uh, the performance of our system is comparable to the SRTF, who has the full knowledge of uh, deep learning jobs. We ran our simulations using a 10-week job trace from Microsoft over a 2,000 GPU cluster. Other than Young Capacity Scheduler and SRTF, we also compare the performance of our system with Gandiva, which is the most recent uh, deep learning, uh, scheduling framework for deep learning cluster. So when running with our system, almost every job can have shorter job composition time compared to running with Gandiva. And the average JCT is improved by more than two times. And more evaluation results can be found in our paper. So to conclude, uh, our system, Tiresias, is a GPU cluster manager for distributed deep learning training jobs. It can optimize job completion time without complete job information. Also, it can relax the con placement constraint of deep learning jobs without hurting their training performance. 
The design in our system is simple and practical. It has shown great performance improvements compared to existing solutions. And that's the end of my talk. I will be happy to take questions. So how is this problem any different from scheduling on a big data cluster? Uh, so I think the, no, the biggest difference is our workload. Deep learning training jobs, uh, as I mentioned at the, in the motivation part, it has several unique challenges, like the unpredictable training time, and also in job placement, uh, it may need the consolidated placement. And also in resource allocation, it has requires the all or nothing, which means like if I it has to get all the results at the same time, which is different from the previous big data applications. Hi. Hi. Uh, what, what kind of uh, parallelization have you used for your uh, machine learning models? Yeah, so in all our experiments, we use data parallel. And I see, because we think that this is the most uh, uh, popular uh, parallelism method for deep learning training. So if, if you have used uh, data parallelism, then what is your intuition for the difference between your uh, tensor sizes? Aren't you transferring all your tensors at once? Uh, no. I think a uh, different framework may have different methods to transfer the results of each tensor. So in model aggregation, they need to transmit the gradients of the tensor, and uh, in the background, um, the, uh, it need also needs to transmit the tensor to the worker. But how to transmit those tensors by one tensor per time or transmit the tensor in batch is all totally decided by the framework. Uh, okay, we, we can follow this offline. Oh, okay, thank you. So another quick question. So, and it sort of uh, uh, builds on top of the question he just asked. Mm -hmm. So I mean, is it a function of having multiple parameter servers that the tensors being like, uh, which is some, some parameter server is holding big tensors, some are holding small tensors, or it's because of how they're distributed in the worker side? Um, it's because um, those tens that's because of the tensor distribution at uh, parameter server side. Because, um, Firstly, different framework may have different methods to distribute their tensors uh, to the parameter servers. But um, in most cases, uh, if there's a big tensor, they will assign this big tensor to uh, the existing parameter servers. So because of the existing of the large tensor, the, uh, in terms of network load, there can be imbalanced. Uh, one last question. Uh, so I mean, so I mean, isn't it sort of uh, like going to solve the problem if I can come up with a mechanism that can divide the tensor into evenly sized sort of components that you can evenly distribute across parameter servers instead of whatever you are doing? Yes, uh, that's possible. But if you um, put a single tensor across multiple uh, parameter servers which located on different machines, then when you are, when you are doing model aggregation in terms of that tensor, there will be much more uncertainty. If one of the parameter server or the machine posting this time server is shut down, then there will be, uh, be, there will be a large uh, problem. Got it. Yeah. OK, let's thank the speaker one more time.